During this election campaign, our mainstream politicians will be discussing a whole host of issues. But there's one issue they will not touch, and that is the British military role in Gaza. And you'd be forgiven for not knowing what that involvement is because the mainstream media has not covered it at all. At Declassified, we have been covering for six months what this British military involvement in Gaza is, and it's extensive. 200 spy flights have been sent by the UK military over Gaza since December. And these are flights that are in the air for six hours collecting intelligence. It includes a flight which was in the air when Israel assassinated three British aid workers. Survivors from the strike on the first vehicle tried to take cover in the second one, which was hit next. Then the wounded from there tried to get to the third car. The vehicles were targeted three times in succession until everyone was killed. So you have the insane situation where the Israelis have targeted and blown up three British aid workers, yet the UK is supplying them with intelligence, including from that day, but we're not allowed to know what intelligence is being shared with the Israeli authorities. On top of that, we've sent 60 huge military transport vehicles to Israel since the Gaza bombing began. These are C-17s and A-400s, huge vehicles which can carry Chinook helicopters, they can carry tanks, and they can carry up to 150 personnel. Why have we sent 60 to Israel? Again, the British government refuses to give a full account of what has been on those flights. On top of that, we've been training Israeli soldiers in Britain while the genocide has been ongoing. The British government was also refusing to say how many Israeli military planes were visiting Britain. I published an article on Declassified UK with evidence that Israeli military planes had landed at four different locations within Britain. The British government then reversed course and said, okay, we will tell you now. And they said that nine military planes had landed in Britain since the Gaza bombing began, but they refused to say what was on them. Nearly all of the logistical British support for Israel's genocide in Gaza has been done through RAF Akrotiri. This is a British base you probably didn't know existed on Cyprus since independence in 1960. And it's a vast sprawling airbase. I've been there. At Declassified, I revealed for the first time how many US troops were permanently stationed at RAF Akrotiri. It's 129. The Americans and the British had kept that secret for 50 years. And now the UK government says it won't tell us if the US is using that British base on Cyprus to transfer weapons to Israel. Haaretz, the main liberal newspaper in Israel, called RAF Akrotiri the main logistical hub for supplying Israel for its genocide in Gaza. We are complicit materially in what is happening in Gaza. But the mainstream media is also complicit in what is happening because it won't report it. What is British Special Forces' role in Gaza? On October 22nd, the Sun newspaper reported that the SAS had deployed to Cyprus for quote-unquote Gaza operations related to hostage rescue. The following day, a D notice was sent out by the UK's censorship body telling all editors not to publish any more information about UK Special Forces and their role in Gaza. That D notice had an impact. We've not heard one more bit of information about the special forces role in Gaza. So every single editor, every single journalist which has information about the special forces role in Gaza is complicit in the genocide because the D notice is not binding. It's a voluntary system. So the only reason to abide by it is if you're in the service of the UK military, not in the service of journalism and truth. It is virtually impossible to get any information about special forces. And that's not because they want to defend British security is because they want to defend their security from you. They are operating all over the world, including in recent years in Yemen, Syria, Libya, Somalia, without any democratic oversight or without any knowledge of the British public. In the case of Gaza, it becomes extremely important because there are live war crimes and genocide investigations into Israel's operation in Gaza. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Minister of Defense Yoav Gallant bear criminal responsibility for the following international crimes. Starvation of civilians as a method of warfare, willfully causing great suffering, serious injury to body or health or cruel treatment, willful killing or murder, and intentionally directing attacks against a civilian population, as well as crimes against humanity of extermination and or murder. The fact that British Special Forces 
may have been involved is extremely worrying and we need to know the truth. During this election campaign, Labour and Tory will try to present themselves as two different parties with two different visions for the country, but it's a lie. On domestic policies, there's virtually no difference. And on foreign policy, they are in lockstep completely. Everything I've told you about the British role in Gaza has been done by a Tory government, but every single part of it has been backed by the Labour Party. They are in lockstep when it comes to supporting the secret state and making sure that it has no accountability. All these operations that the British government are doing to support the genocide in Gaza are done with our money. It's taxpayers' money. Now, during this general election, both Sunak and Starmer will be talking about making tough choices. I had to take that tough decision. If we take the tough decisions. Tough choices, it's not a soundbite. It's the day-to-day -day reality we will face if we win power. But the war state never has to face those tough choices. When it comes to war, money is never a concern. Both Sunak and Starmer, Tory and Labour have committed 75 billion extra funds to the military by 2030. Yet neither of them are promising enough money for the NHS, for the schools for your kids. That's because the political system is controlled by the military industrial complex. The war in Gaza has shown that we have a superficial democracy. We have some democratic elements, but there's whole swathes of the state that we're not allowed to know about and we're not allowed to know what they do. We're not allowed to know what our role in Gaza is. We're not allowed to know what our special forces are doing. We're not allowed to know if the US are using their bases in Britain to transport weapons to Israel. But we should know, and we must know, because it's being done in our name, with our money. And 70% of British people want a ceasefire now. So we need real democracy, and we need a political system that is responsive to the will of the people. And we need a military which does not operate in the shadows and contribute to some of the worst crimes in the world. If it was left to the mainstream media, we would know nothing about the British role in the bloodbath in Gaza. Thankfully, independent media has established itself in every corner of Britain. But this is only possible with your support. So please support Declassified UK and join Double Down News on Patreon.